This video is brought to you by Captivating History. For as long as humans have been on the planet, we've been fighting with each other. Early in our evolution, our species found a way to control our primal aggression. However, warfare continues to be a regular occurrence. While we can never be sure when the first war was fought, it has been a central part of our written history since records began. Here is our list of the top 10 important events in military history. Number 1. The Invention of the Bow and Arrow The bow and arrow is one of the oldest weapons used by humans. It is thought that archery dates to around 20,000 BCE. Bone arrowheads found at Sibutu Cave in South Africa have been dated to 61,000 years ago. This weapon was used for both warfare and hunting, right up to the modern day. U.S. military troops used crossbows and bows for shooting flaming arrows during the Vietnam War. Bows and arrows vary considerably. Bowyers adapted bows to be used from a great distance, up close and on horseback. The arrows themselves vary from the fletch to the point. During the Middle Ages, longbow arrows had points that were armor-piercing, barbed points that would cause more damage when removed than they did going in, and a lot more besides. Archery can be found across the globe in some form or another with Australian Aborigines being the only civilization not to use bows and arrows. While the bow and arrow were undoubtedly invented for hunting, it is one of the most prevalent weapons of war in our military history. Constantly evolving in materials and design, archery has stood the test of time and is still popular today. Number 2. The Iron Age The Iron Age started around 1200 BCE and signaled the beginning of the end of the Bronze Age. Wrought iron had been produced by the Hittites for 200 years before the technology to create it spread rapidly over the known world. These iron weapons and armor were far superior to bronze, and Bronze Age civilizations were easily wiped out by armies wielding iron axes, swords, and spears. The superiority of iron weapons, among other things, would also give Europeans the advantage over many civilizations during the Age of Discovery in the 15th century. Iron revolutionized the military giving armies stronger weapons and more robust defenses. And iron remains an integral part of the production of military armaments to this day. Number 3. The Just War Theory This doctrine, developed by St. Thomas Aquinas in the Middle Ages, sets out certain guidelines to judge whether a war could be justified and how it should be fought. Christianity was not a pacifist religion, but they liked God to be on their side if they felt the need to resort to violence. The Just War Theory laid out specific rules that anyone who wanted to declare war had to follow, if their war was to be deemed justifiable and therefore supported by the Church. Aquinas' original conditions were, the war must be in self-defense and not for the acquisition of power or wealth. An authority must officially declare war, and the war must be fought with the aim of restoring justice and peace once it is over. Later, more conditions were added such as war must be a last resort, once negotiation failed. The war could only target soldiers and not civilians, and the good that results from the war must be greater than the evil that led to it. The just war theory was primarily a Western construct, although many other nations and cultures developed rules regarding military action. This theory is still widely debated today, and some argue whether war can ever be genuinely just. Number 4. The Invention of Gunpowder In 850 CE, Chinese alchemists were trying to find an elixir of life. Instead, what they discovered could be referred to as an elixir of death. Gunpowder completely changed military history. At first, gunpowder was used to create flaming arrows, and soon after, grenades and cannons were invented. The Chinese used these to defeat the Mongols. Eventually, during the 13th century, the science behind gunpowder traveled down the Silk Road, and revolutionized warfare in Europe and the Middle East. By 1350, cannons were commonplace in the English and French militaries. In 1453, the Ottoman Turks took Constantinople using cannons, and the seemingly impregnable fortifications fell to this new explosive force. In the 15th century, gunpowder birthed the modern army. The invention of the handgun gave foot soldiers a new edge and created a new type of troop, the infantry. While it took years for archers to become experts in their field, a soldier could be taught to use a handgun in a matter of weeks. 
This speed of training meant a larger portion of military units could do damage from afar. At first, guns were slow to load, probably slower than a skilled archer could knock his bow, so they were used alongside other military tactics and weaponry. But it is undeniable the damage that a handgun could do in the hands of a relatively unskilled soldier. Gunpowder is still the basis for many weapons used by the military today, although it is no longer the most explosive weapon in the arsenal. Number 5. The Industrial Revolution As the handgun gave birth to the modern army, the Industrial Revolution was the mother of contemporary warfare. Weapons could be mass-produced and improved by new technologies. Guns were able to fire bullets repeatedly with enhanced accuracy and range. With the steam engine, armies became more mobile. A new type of naval force was unleashed, and troops could travel by railroad 15 times as fast as marching. Scientists began inventing new military hardware, and civilians could now help with the war effort by working in factories that created the needed products for the front lines. Historians call the American Civil War the first truly modern war, but it was the first world war that saw industrialized warfare used on a grand scale. Factories became as important as armies and were seen as legitimate targets despite being filled with citizens. Lines that defined justifiable conflict became blurred as nation pitted against nation. From the Industrial Revolution onwards, military combat would never be the same. Number 6. Technological Communication Communication had always been the backbone of a successful military campaign. The ability to keep up-to-date information and clear communication could make or break an army. Telecommunications eliminated any delay in receiving information. The military used Morse code with both sound and light to relay messages a short distance, and the electric telegraph was in widespread use during the American Civil War. As technology advanced, portable Morse code machines enabled men in the field to receive orders from head office and relay important information back to their superiors quicker than ever before. Another device was used for sound ranging, using the sound of the enemy's gunfire to establish their position. Toward the end of the 19th century, the wireless telegraph, or radio, began to be used for military communication. Radio was instrumental when communicating with naval forces at sea. Wireless communication came with their own set of problems, namely security. Code had to be used when transmitting sensitive information over the wireless telegraph. Today, military communication security is an industry in itself. Number 7. Manned Flight In 1909, the Wright brothers made the world's first military airplane. Called the Wright Military Flyer, it was commissioned to be an observation craft. You can still see this plane at the National Air and Space Museum in Washington, D.C. Before the airplane, armed forces were using hot air and hydrogen balloons for reconnaissance. From 1794 to 1799, a French military organization called the Aristeers operated contributing to the success of many battles and sieges for the French army. Both armies in the American Civil War used reconnaissance balloons. During World War I, airships were employed to drop explosive and incendiary bombs when most aircraft were still not weaponized. However, militarized flight really took off with the airplane. After 1910, experiments started taking place to arm airplanes. Planes were fitted with machine guns and bomb carriers. The first airplane to be used in combat was by the Italians in 1911. During the Italo-Turkish War, an Italian pilot flew a reconnaissance mission near Tripoli, followed by an air bombing raid. Since then, airplanes have been modified and designed for a multitude of different military needs. The U.S. Air Force currently has over 39 distinct types of aircraft at its disposal. The list includes transport planes, fighter planes, bombers, maritime patrol planes, attack planes, and surveillance planes. The latest advancement in air warfare is, of course, UAVs, unmanned aerial vehicles. These aircraft are guided by remote control and are used for surveillance and intervention on the battlefield. Number 8. The Use of Media In other words, propaganda. Although propaganda was nothing new, it kicked up a gear during the First World War. Governments used the media in many ways for specific gains. Newspapers were used to gain support for the war and justify the actions of the governments. A lot of propaganda during World War I took a moralistic stance. It highlighted the enemy's crimes, vilifying the people and their cause by widely publicizing any atrocities they had committed. Leaflets, posters, and postcards were used alongside stories in newspapers 
to push the idea that the people who were on the side of the enemy were morally corrupt by their nature. The effectiveness of such propaganda can still be felt today in many parts of Europe. Propaganda took the fight from the physical realm into the hearts and minds of people. Gone are the days where men were forced to fight for a feudal lord or king simply because of where they lived. For a war to be fought effectively, you need willing soldiers who believe in the cause for which they are fighting. Propaganda has gone from being a valuable weapon to a necessary tool for the military. As military spending and war are not political subjects, citizens demand to know more about the reasons behind conflicts, especially if public money is being spent on them. Politicians must have the support of their nation in any military actions or risk losing their position. Number 9. The Invention of Chemical, Biological, and Nuclear Warfare Chemical warfare has been around for centuries. The first recorded occurrence happened in 256 BCE, where a mixture of tar and sulfur were used to produce sulfur oxides and take control of a Persian city. Historically, chemicals were used primarily for their flammable properties rather than their toxic effects. The First World War was distinctive in many ways, and it was the first war to use chemical weapons on an industrial scale. In August 1914, the French used tear gas grenades. The following year, on April 22, 1915, the Germans fired around 150 tons of lethal chlorine gas at French troops in Belgium. This attack paved the way for the Allies to develop chemical weapons. The horrifying effects of these chemical attacks led to them being banned after World War I. On June 17, 1925, the Geneva Protocol was signed, prohibiting the use of chemical and biological weapons. During the Second World War, Germany, the U.S., and the U.K. stockpiled tons of chemical weapons. Fortunately, none of them were used out of fear of retaliation in kind. On July 16, 1945, the first atomic weapon was detonated as a test. Robert Oppenheimer, the atomic bomb creator, witnessed the event, prompting him to quote from the Bhagavad Gita, Now I am become death, the destroyer of worlds. The nuclear bomb has only been used in combat twice. The devastation it caused sent the world into panic, and many powers started to develop their own nuclear capabilities. The theory of mutually assured destruction, now referred to as nuclear deterrence, was created. This theory meant that neither side would fire their atomic arsenal, as the other side would immediately launch a counterattack, and both sides, as well as many others, would be destroyed in the conflict. Number 10. Social media. It might seem odd to include this on this list, but its effect on military conflicts is undeniable. As well as being used by military forces for communications and propaganda, civilians can use it to share the realities of war. Social media connects people from around the world, as well as helping to keep up communication with people in their community. Militaries are now building strategies and tactics for social media to combat disinformation and engage the public. Social media can be seen as an amalgamation of propaganda and communication, and its long-term effect on military conflicts has yet to be seen. Thanks for watching our video, the top 10 important events in military history. If you enjoyed it, please hit the like button and subscribe for more videos like this. Also, grab your free Mythology Bundle ebook while it's still available. All links are in the description.